joined us um, this afternoon. And our hope is that you will take away some tips and some knowledge about living a cleaner lifestyle. That is my dog. Crying. She wants cookies, so she cries at the pantry. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Anyway, so what we, who we have with us is um, Heather Glenn, and she is a nutritional ther um, therapy practitioner, and she's going to share tips on nutrition, which I can't wait to hear that. And then I will be sharing um, tips on safer, cleaner beauty. And Karen Lynch will be, um, she's a clutter coach, a declutter expert, and a minimalist, and she will share tips on how to clean your house healthier. So... And then we'll also have drawings for prizes. And I put, um, so far I put Kay, Gina, and Maria in our drawings. So at the end we'll do, we'll do drawings, which is always fun. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So I think we have, first we'll do, we'll start with you, Heather. You can start to share. Sounds great. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen because as I said, I'm super visual and I like to have things to look at. Um, so just uh, raise your hand if you can see my screen. Okay, so I'm gonna put this into my presentation mode here and move you guys a little bit out of the way. All right, so um, welcome to our Spring Into Cleaner Health. I'm Heather Glenn and I am a functional nutritional therapy practitioner and um, Really excited to be here today just to talk to you a little bit about making some cleaner choices when it comes to nutrition to help support your body's um, foundations, to support your function so that you can improve energy, improve your metabolism, um, sleep better, and maybe be able to even lose a little bit of that stubborn weight if you feel like you're struggling with that piece. Um, Always moving these forward is tricky. Okay, here we go. So what we're going to cover, I'm going to try to go really quick because just to be mindful of everyone's time, um, but the role that clean foods play in optimizing our health, um, what the nutritional therapy approach is and the underlying foundations that we um, look at when we're working with clients, um, how to properly source real food, how to properly prepare food, um, pantry swaps, um, and then supporting the detoxification process. So obviously all of these topics are pretty meaty and they could take up a weekend workshop in themselves. There's a lot of information in each. So I'm just going to touch on a little bit in each area, but let's talk quickly about why do you want to shop for clean food? So chronic stress is one of the leading causes of modern disease. Back in the day, it used to be infections. It could be getting eaten by a lion, um, freezing in the cold winter. But nowadays, um, chronic stress is really the leading cause of heart disease, diabetes, autoimmune disease. Um, and these were all things that weren't very common before. So with chronic stress, it leads to hormone imbalance. It can lead to digestive issues, inflammation, an overworked immune system metabolic disorders, struggling with weight gain, unexplained weight gain. Um, so quickly, what is chronic versus acute stress? So acute stress is something that happens. It's pretty intense, but it's pretty short lived. So think again about our ancestors, a tiger pops out of the bush and chases us down is a pretty stressful experience but it's over pretty quickly. And it's hopefully it's because we actually got away from the tiger. Um, but then our body goes back into that calming mode and the rest of our life is pretty calm. And we're kind of doing the day to day, hanging out. There's not a lot of stress. Nowadays, we have chronic stress from so many angles. And I'm gonna talk about what some of the high level stressors are, but because we're constantly under stress, our bodies never really get a chance to recuperate. And follow me on this one, but food is a big stressor. So why I kind of want to start with talking about stress overall and why it's important that we're managing stress and why eating clean foods can be a piece of that. Um, so when we're under chronic stress and body systems get taxed, the body systems that are needed to help us survive 
are the ones that steal nutrients from the other body systems. And when those other body systems don't have the nutrients they need, then they will start to work or not work properly. So for example, we need to be able to run away from a tiger. So uh, the nutrients will go to the hormones and the energy systems needed to run away, but they'll steal the nutrients from making hormones for reproduction. And so we won't be able to reproduce if we have chronic stress over time and our nutrients are depleted. Um, so then there's the stress bucket theory, which is our body can only handle so many stressors before it overflows and it's not able to keep up with dealing with the stressors. And that's again, when we can go into dealing with a lot of the symptoms we deal with today and leading to these modern diseases. So the goal with this is to then start removing stressors. So our bucket doesn't overflow. So some of the common types of stressors, we all know about emotional and psychological, psychological stress from our day to day. Um, it could be a stressful job. It could be parenting, um, sitting in traffic. There's also physical stress. So an injury, maybe having, um, struggling with blood sugar dysregulation. It could be some type of a digestive parasitic infection. Um, it could be environmental. So air, water, food, products, processed foods, all of those are stressors as well as um, digestive stressors like foods not digesting, um, having food sensitivities, maybe a microbiome imbalance, or again, processed foods. So food can be a really big stressor. So if we can start eating cleaner foods or eating foods that don't stress our body, we'll be on the road to optimal health and better energy, better metabolic function, um, and feeling great. So we're gonna choose foods in their whole form that are chemical-free, hormone-free, antibiotic-free, things that will reduce the toxic load and stress on our body leading to better function and overall health. So really quickly, um, just the foundations of nutritional therapy. So the gui guiding principles that we use when working with clients is that we take a bio um, individual approach um, to our clients um, and we use our own bio individual feedback or own, your, our own experiences as humans. Um, and we use ancestral wisdom and we also use scientific research. So it's kind of balancing those three modes of um, assessing overall health. Um, and then, as I mentioned, um, we're committed to bio-individuality. So no one person is the same. So no one diet works for everyone. Um, we use a food first approach to balancing the foundations, which you can see those in the picture here. Um, and then we use a variety of evaluative tools to determine where imbalances might be happening in the body or where deficiencies may be happening. And then we tailor our uh, food supplement and lifestyle recommendations to target those areas. So the foundations, there's six of them. One is focusing on nutrient dense, properly prepared whole foods. Um, we look at digestion, blood sugar regulation, dietary fats and balancing the fats. Um, minerals, which is our body's spark plugs, and hydration. And then if we support these six foundations, we support what we call the consequence systems in organs, which could be things like your adrenal glands, your female hormones, it could be detoxification. Um, so again, our thought is we support the six foundations, all the body systems are gonna be working well. So really quickly, properly sourcing our food, there's four keys to this. So the first one is think variety. So trying to get a lot of variety in your diet. So our ancestors used to eat 300 to 1,000 different types of foods, and we tend to eat nowadays 15 to 20 different types of foods. So not very diverse, and about 60% of our foods come from things like wheat, corn, and soy. So one tip in this area is try to get five different colors on your plate at each meal. You want to think locally. So again, the, the closer the food is to you, um, 
the more nutrient dense it will be because it won't lose nutritional value as it's traveling across the country. And it's also great in terms of just reducing our carbon imp imprint because um, we're not carting our food all across the country in vehicles and polluting the air. Um, so, you know, shop your local's farmer's markets or try a CSA box. And you can Google those online to figure out where one would be in your area. You want to think seasonally. So try to find fruits and vegetables that are in season because they're going to be more nutrient dense and they're going to taste a lot better. And again, they won't have to be grown in some unnatural way because it's not the right type of the year for them to grow, or they won't have to be brought in from say down south somewhere. Um, and you can again, easily Google that online to see what's in season. And then you can search for recipes that use those types of foods. Um, think quality. So quality of food is a big deal. Um, this is a huge topic on just in terms of like shopping organic and grass fed and all that stuff, which I'm going to quickly fly through here just to give you some tips. But one thing you can do is you can go to the environmental working group website and you can actually download this little picture. Um, the dirty dozen are the fruits and vegetables that tend to have the highest pesticide content and easily absorb those pesticides. So you definitely want to shop organic on those. And the clean 15 tend to have less pesticides or more protective coating on it that they don't keep those to toxins in as high of levels. So if you can't afford organic on everything, these are ones that you could maybe do conventional and be a little bit safer. So properly raised, um, ruminant animals, so beef, lamb, buffalo, bison, goat, what do you wanna look for when you're purchasing? So these animals are meant to eat grass, it's their natural food source, and they're not meant to eat corn grains and commercial feed. So grass-fed, if you see that on something, it means that they've eaten mostly grass or eaten grass most of their lives, but it doesn't mean that it's been exclusively grass because they may be fed grain the last few months to fatten them up. So what you wanna look for is grass-fed and grass-finished or 100% grass fed. And animals that eat their natural food are gonna be healthier animals. If they're not eating their natural food, like if we're eating foods that aren't natural to us, then their bodies are gonna be less healthy. So we'll be eating less healthy animals. And we are what we eat. Uh, so uh, pasture raised, so if you see something that says pasture raised or pastured, it means that the animals spend most of their time outside eating their natural foods, but they still may also be fed grains. So pasture raised or pastured refers to where they're eating, but not necessarily what they're eating. So again, looking for grass fed, grass finished or 100% grass fed. Okay, I know this is super tiny and I'll just go through it really quickly, but when you're looking at poultry, the, the best option is gonna be um, pasture raised. Okay, so cage free means they're just not in cages, but they still may be in small spaces indoors away from sunlight. Uh, free range means that they have access to outdoors, but you don't know how much time they're outdoors and you don't know if they're on grass, dirt, concrete. Um, so there's a lot of like ambiguity here on like what you don't really know unless you know the farmer. So best choice is pasture raised. If you can befriend your farmer where you're buying your eggs and your chickens, um, better yet, because you can ask them about the environment. When it comes to seafood, um, you wanna go with wild caught versus farm raised. Um, farm raised, they're usually in small enclosures. They're sometimes fed unnatural diets. They can get disease, so they might be fed antibiotics. Um, so if you can go wild caught, that's the better option. And then regardless, if you go for smaller fish, they're, they're at the beginning of the food chain, they're gonna carry less toxins than say the larger predatory fish that have eaten up all the other animals and sort of bioaccumulated these toxins. So if you can go for smaller fish, that's one way to kind of reduce toxin intake. 
Okay, and then again, just remember, we're not only what we eat, but what, our, what we eat eats. So we wanna make sure we're eating animals that are eating their natural foods, they're in um, a good environment, not a stressful environment, and they're not being fed antibiotics, hormones, um, things like that. So proper, when it comes to properly preparing your food, because this is just as important as the types of foods that you get, is how you actually prepare them. So there's a lot of things we could go into, like what types of kitchen equipment to use, how to store it. Um, but today I just want to focus on fats and oils. Um, because this is one that if we're heating or not properly taking care of certain oils, they can actually become really toxic to us. Um, there's a lot of controversy around fats, including like what types we should be eating and how much, but I'm not going to go over that part today. I'm, I'm not going to talk about saturated versus unsaturated. I'm going to talk more about sourcing and safe use. Um, so all fats play an important role in health, even saturated fat, with the exception of hydrogenated oils or processed vegetable oils. Those are two oils that we want to cut out of our diet as much as we can. So the processed vegetable oils are going to be things like canola, corn, soybean, cottonseed. So the reason why is that those vegetable oils, they're often... That was like my little timer. So if it's okay, Monique, I'll just kind of keep going. I've probably got like five more minutes. Sure, certainly. Um, so with the processed vegetable oils, um, they, can, they often get heated and processed with chemicals. And so by the time they actually get to the store and because they're usually kept in clear bottles, so light can actually um, turn them rancid. So they become rancid and by the time you buy them at the grocery store, they're already basically poison for our body. Um, so those are ones that you just want to avoid at all costs. So unfortunately, many foods use these oils in them, like you probably see it in potato chips. And I tell you, when I try to buy nuts, <laughs> it's so hard to find nuts unless they're basically just plain raw nuts um, to find them without these types of oils in them. So just check your labels. Um, you're not going to be able to avoid all of this stuff all of the time, but do your best because we don't want to also become food, food phobic either. Okay. Properly prepare your foods. Again, just talk, finishing up on the fats here. So the fats you eat will make up your cells walls. They also are used in hormone production. So the type of fats you eat are really important for cell health and for hormone production. Um, and the quality of our cells are going to be based off of the fats that we eat. Trans fats can plasticize the outside of our cell walls, which means nutrients won't be able to go in or out. And that's not going to be good for anyone because those poor little cells are not going to be able to do their job or get rid of waste as it builds up inside. Um, when it comes to fats, temperature and how you store them are really, really key. So on this little graph here, or this little chart here, it kind of categorizes the different types of fats you can use. So for high heat cooking, go for things like ghee or butter, um, tallow and lard, this animal fat, chicken or duck fat, um, and then coconut oil or red palm oil. If you're doing low heat, olive oil's okay. You can do some avocado oil, sesame oil. So think maybe if you're doing a stir fry, just keep the heat lower. And then the oils that you don't wanna heat at all are almond, flax, pumpkin, walnut. They're all, they're all listed here. You can make dressings. Those are things you'll drizzle on top. Um, and then again, completely avoiding those toxic oils. Um, all right, we talked about high heat destroying fats. Um, and fats not being meant to be eaten. Okay, quick, um, simple pantry and fridge swaps. This list could go a mile long, but I've just picked a few. Use sea salt or Himalayan salt instead of your regular table salt. Good news with those is there's a lot of electrolytes in there that your body actually needs. So a lot of minerals. Um, try packaged beans if you can versus canned beans. Anything in a can means it's sitting there in metal 
and some of the metal can leach into your food. I know this is a harder one for me just because with the beans, you usually have to soak them. Um, but sometimes if you do like a pressure or a slow cooker, you can get away with the packaged beans. Um, go for whole organic or raw milk versus skim, low fat or pasteurized milk, because obviously those are processed um, and actually takes out the enzymes your body needs to actually be able to digest the milk. So you're better off to go with the whole organic or the raw milk. And raw milk tastes just like regular milk. I didn't think it would when I tried it. I was a little nervous, but it actually tastes really good. Um, again, go, you can go with organic butter. Um, butter's actually really, really healthy for you. It has a lot of vitamin A. It has butyric acid, which is great for your colon health. Um, and choose that over the margarines or the vegetable butters. Organic coffee over non-organic. Coffee can carry a lot of mold toxins. So if you feel pretty crummy when you drink coffee, that could be part of the reason why. Um, use avocado or olive oil instead of the canolas. We kind of already talked about all of that, but you can swap, easily swap those out. And then try for natural sweeteners like honey, blackstrap molasses, maple syrup, stevia, monk, monk fruit, instead of going for the white or brown sugar or the artificial sweeteners. Okay, really quick, one little slide here on detoxification. How do you support getting the toxins out now that we probably, I mean, we can't really avoid being exposed to toxins. So how do we get those out? Here's just a few ways that we can start doing that. Drink a lot of clean filtered water. The water is what's gonna help flush those toxins out. So you wanna make sure you're drinking plenty of it and that your water source is clean. So get a filter if you don't have one. Um, just so that you're ensuring you're not taking in even more toxins from the water you're drinking. Um, a great thing to do in the morning is drink a cup of warm lemon water. That's really gonna help stimulate your liver and a lot of vitamin C is really helpful for de detoxification. Eat more beets. Hopefully you guys love beets. They are high in betaine, it helps with liver function. Um, it thins the bile and the bile um, releases into your digestive tract. And it's actually kind of one of the ways that we sweep toxins out of our body. It basically brings them from the liver into the digestive tract and helps them come out through the elimination process. Um, so we, we like beets because they help the bile flow. Um, a big thing is supporting digesting and eliminating. And the reason why is we got to digest our food to get the nutrients we need for detoxification and we have to eliminate in order to get the toxins out. That's one path of detoxification or elimination. Um, bounce or exercise more. It moves the lymph, which is where toxins can hang out. Um, and lymph doesn't move on its own like blood does in our circulatory system. We actually need to move for the lymph to move. So we need to bounce if you have a little trampoline or just exercise. Um, dry brushing is great. It can help with releasing toxins through the skin. And I always recommend to do some type of a nutritional cleanse once or twice a year because we all build up toxins and it's so helpful to support that process of getting toxins out and also eating really clean during that time frame. So we're reducing the toxic load coming in from foods um, and digestive stress and things like that. So I have two that I love. There's a three-day one, but I really love the 21-day. If you really want to feel amazing, um, a 21-day program I've done a few times. I actually had a group just finish, and I'm starting a group in April. Um, and you, feel, you will feel amazing after you do this program and you learn a lot about nutrition. And generally, you'll drop a decent amount of weight. The group that I just helped through the program, I think it was anywhere from like 10 to 15 pounds each, which sounds kind of crazy, but when you're getting rid of so many toxins in your body and your metabolism starts to work better, um, you'd be surprised what your body can do. All right, last slide here. So next steps to spring into cleaner health, pick one to three items from the presentation today, something we talked about here, and take action on it this week even if it's swapping out one ingredient.
It starts with small change compounding over time. Um, I suggest committing to a whole food cleanse of some type if you've never done one. Again, I love the 21 day program that I do um, and just release some of that toxic buildup and you'll feel more energized. Your metabolism is going to go better. You're going to sleep better and your digestion will be better. So if you're curious about it, email me, I can send you some information. And then the other thing you can do is just schedule a complimentary discovery call with me. Um, it's just a way for us to chat about what your goals and concerns are. And if there's, you know, any way I can help you or get you started on the path. Um, and you can use that link there, or you can just email me and I can send you the link. All right. I'm going to escape out of here. Um, and then we'll do questions at the end. Wow. That's a lot. <laughs> I feel like I was <laughs> speeding through that, but hopefully it wasn't too confusing. <laughs> yeah, I was just looking at everything that I, I'm doing wrong. I was like, well, <laughs> well, don't say you're doing wrong. I'm learning. You, you will do, you're just going to work to do a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it's so, I mean, I took so many notes and um, I can't wait to look, go back and listen to the replay because, you know, you always miss things. And I'm excited because I just signed up um, to work with um, Heather on, a, on the Clean Start program. And I haven't yet had a chance, but Friday I'm going to dedicate to get my stuff in order because um, I just feel it's so important to, there's just so much room for improvement on in a lot of areas. And I just know I would feel better. And I've already implemented some of the things that you talked about. And it does make a difference, it truly does. So I love that. So thanks so much, Heather. That was- Yeah, of course. Yeah, very good. Does anybody have any, any do you wanna ask any, answer any questions? Does anyone have any? Oh yeah, I mean, if you wanna do questions now, or I didn't know if you wanna wait. Well, we have a couple minutes because it is, yeah, we have to watch our time to make sure we have time for, for Karen and, and myself, but- um, does anyone have any questions? Um, I, I don't have any um, specific questions. I, I did find um, some of the information was really helpful. Um, specifically in the part where you were saying that um, you should try to eat foods that are in season. And, you know, I think a lot of times we just get so spoiled with the abundance that we see at the supermarket that we think that everything is in season all the time, but that's not the case. And um, I do find that certain things taste a lot better when they are in season than when when they're not supposed to be in the in the supermarket. Yeah, so and you can that. you can also if you just shop at the farmers market, you pretty much know what's in season because they're mm -hmm. all local, so they're bringing stuff from the area. Right. Right. Yeah. That made me think about that too, Maria. Because I'm like, yeah, you know, and you're right. Things do taste better when they're in season. Yeah. Well, great. Oh, thanks, Heather. That was fabulous. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. So I think I'm next on the agenda. And um, so I'm going to talk about um, a lot of chemicals that are in your um, beauty items. And um, just to know, just so you know, um, did you know over 80,000 chemicals are used in beauty products that affect our health, future generations, and our environment? Um, and some of the products include um, shampoo, hand soap, lotion, sunscreen, lipstick, baby products. Yes, I said baby products. Um, women typically use 18 products a day, um, some more, and then men typically use about nine. Um, so it really is the accumulated buildup of these chemicals that are not good for our bodies or, or our environment. Um, they're linked to hormonal disruption, cancer, birth defects, learning disabilities, damage to our reproductive systems, affect sperm count in men, pollute our oceans, and more things. Um, and there has been no regulation of beauty ingredients since 1938. So that's 82 years there has been no regulation. Um, so I'm going to share a few offending chemicals with you. So the first one are parabens. I don't know if you're aware of parabens, but they're, they're actually a preservative and they're used commonly to prevent growth of bacteria and mold. And parabens are um, hormone disruptors. 
which may alter important hormone mechanisms in our bodies. And they're found in shampoo, face cleanser, body wash, body lotion, foundation, and more products. Um, the next one are phthalates. And there's little, um, well, the phthalates also go by a, 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 uh, the initials DPB and DEHP. There's just a lot of little, you know, who would know this stuff, right? If you don't, if you're not familiar. Um, and so phthalates are the, a, a class of plasticizing chemicals used to make products more pliable or to make fragrances stick to your skin. So it helps the product stick to your skin, which is crazy. Um, they also disrupt the endocrine system and may cause birth defects. Um, and they're found in synthetic fragrance, nail polish, hairspray, plastic materials, and more. So there's those parabens and phthalates are very common. Um, the next one is synthetic fragrance, and that is a huge one. So it'll say on the label, fragrance slash parfum. You will see that in so many products. As a matter of fact, I just threw away a couple out of it that were in my um, guest room um, extra, you know, supplies. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So I didn't even, that's all I wanted to know. And I just threw those away because, you know, like I said, it's the accumulation of these things in your system that um, it's not just one or two, but it's like everything is full of it. So it's, it's so hard to not, you know, ingest that. Um, so synthetic fragrance is an engineered scent or flavoring agent that may contain any combination of 3000 plus stock chemical ingredients, including hormone disruptors and allergens. A lot of people have um, allergies to all of these um, fragrances. I myself, the more clean I get, the worse it gets for me. I cannot, I mean, yeah. So Karen's shaking her head. She can't just get <laughs> It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so fragrance formulas are protected under federal laws classification of trade secrets and therefore can remain undisclosed. So you have no idea, no idea what they're putting in those fragrances. And there's a lot of chemicals. So they're found in all types of cosmetics and lotions and shampoos and perfumes. I mean, it's every, it's everywhere. I mean. It's even in your um, dish soap. It's in your drying agent for your dishwasher. I mean, well, Karen will speak about more of this stuff, but um, it's, it's just, it's insane. It's just, uh, yeah. Okay, so then I'm gonna, the last thing I'll talk about are dyes. So dyes, there's a lot of lipsticks that are made with synthetic dyes that come from aluminum or petroleum products. So the, I know, right? So these dyes, they're stored in our bodies, in our organs and fatty tissues. And coal tar, which is oftentimes used in uh, mascara. So always check your mascara for, well, for coal tar. That's a, that's a very um, popular ingredient in mascara. Um, but it's also in lipstick as well. So coal tar, one of, one of the petroleum products that is used is known as a carcinogen. Yep. And then some of the colors may even contain heavy metals, very much, a lot of heavy metals in our, in our earth. So some of them are not approved as food colorants, yet they may be used in cosmetics. Um, aluminum is, uh, you probably know this, but it's linked to cancer, um, prostate cancer, and increased risk of Alzheimer's disease. Um, and then the other important thing to think about the lips is um, they easily absorb products through the thin layer of skin. Um, they lack hair and sweat glands. So um, whatever you put on it, on them is quickly absorbed. And I mean, given that most women wear um, lipstick and gloss, it's very important to ensure the ingredients are safe and clean. And then think of that too. You know, you put your lipstick on and then you kiss your significant other or your children, you're transporting that lipstick onto your kids or your you know, spouse. Yeah. So I know it's like, mm -hmm. really? <laughs> you have to worry about that stuff. So, but the good news is um, there are clean beauty brands and there are a lot more 
this day and age than there ever has been because people are really becoming more aware and they are really demanding cleaner, safer products. And of course, I chose Beauty Counter because Beauty Counter really, um, you know, we advocate, we educate, and we formulate for cleaner beauty, not just with, with our company, but for all the entire beauty industry. And that mission, I think that is just a great mission. And I think that um, the work that Beauty Counter is doing is truly amazing. Um, oh, dropped my paper. Hold on. So just a couple, a few milestones that, that Beauty Counter has, um, that is accomplished. Um, so November of 2019, um, the House scheduled a hearing to reopen the Personal Care Safety Act. And they asked one CEO to represent the beauty industry. And that CEO was our CEO, Greg Renfu. And because she was, she's known as the leader in clean. I mean, she truly is. And that is huge out of all beauty companies, she was asked. So, I mean, that that's just huge. Um, another major victory for the, for the movement towards safer, you know, cosmetics, um, Governor um, Newsom, he signed the Toxic Free Cosmetic Act in September of 2020. And that um, was the first nation's state level ban of 24 toxic ingredients, including mercury and formaldehyde from beauty and personal care products. So, and the good news about that is usually things that happen in California, they just kind of move across the nation. So it's because people aren't gonna, um, like they're gonna have to make a product just for California. They're gonna make, you know, the, the product for the whole country. So that is, that is great news. Um, and then in January 2021, um, Hawaii law, Hawaii's law went into effect to ban oxybenzone and ox, octanosate from sunscreen used in Hawaii. So you can't buy any sunscreen in Hawaii that has those ingredients because those ingredients, they collapse coral reefs and obviously they're unhealthy for our bodies. So that's another huge one. And Beauty Counter has been instrumental in in these things because they're such, um, you know, we, we advocate and we educate. And so it's huge, it just, it's really reaching and branching out to so many areas. Um, watch my time. Oh, a couple more things. Um, we're a certified B Corporation. And what that means is, is um, what that means to our consumers is we use our profit for the greater good. We put our profit back into the company. And um, we are the only beauty company to date as a certified B Corp. So that's that's also pretty big, yeah. Um, and then um, I love the fact that we um, use sustainable packaging. M many of our packaging is um, in glass. We're moving to all glass, mostly all glass. Um, and that's huge. And one big factor is the fact that plastic a lot, a lot of times has BPAs in it um, that contain phthalates, and that those phthalates get into the product when they when they're in the packaging. So the glass is the safest way to go. Which and and it's just a it looks nice for two. I like that, and it's um, you can you can use it for other things. I know Karen loves to do use uh, containers for other things. Yeah, yeah. Um, right. Um, and then, um, and then also your product lasts longer in glass. It's not, uh, it's uh, just, it lasts longer. Um, and then we responsibly source our ingredients or our raw ingredients like mica, vanilla, palm oil. So there's that. Um, what else do I want to tell you? Um, gosh, I could go into some products, but I don't want to take too much time because I don't want Karen to share, but I just think it's really important um, to really, I read these labels much more intentionally now than I ever did. And you can find good products out there. You just have to really um, just know what you're looking, you know, what to avoid. And some of those big names that I mentioned, those products that I mentioned, chemicals that I mentioned um, should be avoided. And that it's, 
that's just a sa safer for you and our planet because everything you put well not everything but many things you put on your your body you know like in the shower your body wash your hair your shampoo your conditioner it goes into our environment so it's affecting our environment so um so i'm available if you um want a you know private consultation or need some samples or um you know, I'm always, I love to help people and educate people on, on different products. And um, because when I educate people, I also learn. And so I do, I do love that. And just one more thing, and then I'll hand off to um, Karen. Um, so this month, um, as a new, if you're a brand new beauty counter client, which I think I have a few clients here on the phone or on the line, but um, we are offering 10% savings for new clients. And then you get um, free um, shipping with a $75 order. Or actually, tonight ends our, fit, our free shipping with a $50 order. So if you, you get free shipping if your order is anything up to $50, $50 or over, so that ends tonight. We had it for two days. And let's see what else. I think that's it. So thank you for listening. Any questions? I can't believe the, I didn't even think about the lip, you know, with uh, no hair, no sweat glands and going right in. That was shocking. And the coal tar in the mascara. Yeah, yeah. I know. Crazy. It is, it is so crazy. That's why it's so hard to take it off. You know, when you're trying to get it off, you've come away with eyelashes. Ugh. A good point. And then the other thing too is, I've never thought about this, but those lip stains, you know, those lip stains that they have available. Mm -hmm. It's like, what is in there that is like, that color is just embedded. It's like, some things, I just don't trust that. I don't know. Maybe it, that's yeah. just, I, I don't you. know. I'm with you. I need a lip liner. I definitely need a, a lip liner to match my twig. So I'm going to put that on my list. <laughs> you can okay. get like a little brush and just use the brush on the lipstick and then line the lips yeah you can but actually um so it's funny you mentioned a lip liner because we don't um we don't have lip liners yet uh christy coleman is our um, artistic director she i just love her she's great but um so what i use i use our our eyeliner it's eyeliner and oops that's the little squishy thing and then i use that as my lip liner oh that's a great idea yeah, and there's what color would be good for your twig is brown. It would be a, a nice lip liner. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I this is the violet one. Can you see that? Yeah. That's pretty. But I use the brown one too. Yeah. And I like it has for the eyes, because you can use it for your eyes too, which you know it's a double, double product. It has the little um the smudger. You know, little smudger. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Oh my God. I need to order. I'm almost out of this one, but but yeah, so, and you can also do one more thing too to line your lips. I learned this from Christy Coleman. This actually is a blusher, but if you, if your lipstick, if you angle it to a certain angle, you can actually um, use the pointy side as a lip liner. Oh, I never thought about that. Interesting. I know, right? Yeah. Or I find it, um, but I just, I use the, either the violet or the brown, whichever I'm wearing. Yeah. That's a good idea. So that works too. Great. Well, thank you for listening. Oh my gosh. So, yes. And so now we have um, Karen. And Karen yes. is about, um, a healthier home, which I'm excited to hear that. Yeah. Well, that. thank you for having me. And I hope you can, I had to push myself back so you can see what I'm, what I've got here. And right here, I've got a Norwex um, cutting board, which is actually made of rice husks. And let me just kind of give you some background about me. I do have Lyme disease. My mother died of cancer um, almost five years ago. And I have been transitioning toward minimalism for several years. And that doesn't mean like not having a lot of stuff. It's just the way I live my life in a more simplistic way. And you know, having health issues, my children have health issues. We've done away. We've moved into, I know that Heather would approve, into organics. We've done everything that we're supposed to do in that realm. But the one thing that I hadn't looked at was our, our cleaning products and what we, what we were using in the house, in our, in our home. And as a uh, 
declutter expert and someone who works with people to help remove things from their homes, one thing that you know tends to get overlooked, we tend to go for cleaning out the closet or cleaning out the kitchen or getting rid of shoes, but we never look at what's in our utility cabinets or our pantries, the stuff that we have. And most of it is in most homes, chemical. They're either chemical or they are products that go into um, you know, into the garbage can or, you know, something like my husband loves these sponges. And so we no longer use these, you know, we no longer use any kind of white because they're chemical. And once you use it, you throw it away and they don't decompose. Um, so we've done away with, with using those types of products in place um, with, and we replaced it with Norwex. So I'm going to do a little demo. And, um, and while I'm doing the demo, I'm going to tell you what's going on. You know, some of the products that, that I'm using in the house, most of the Norwex products are just you use water only. We do offer a dishwashing soap. We offer an amazing dishwashing powder and a rinse aid. All of the Norwex products are intended to be used. You just need a little bit. When you look at a big uh, container, oh, here comes the dog because I have, I have raw chicken. Um, when you have your Tide or your, you know, your, your fabric softeners and all that, all of that is just additive. It's all chemical and additive and water. And so all of the products, this is at 50 loads of laundry in this little bag and this weighs 500 grams, which is a little over a pound. That's 50 loads of laundry in here. So same thing with the dishwashing detergent. You use literally a quarter of a teaspoon of the powder to do a full load of dishes. So it's meant, you know, you just use a little bit and, uh, and all the products are healthy. But in here, I've got raw chicken and I am going to take my tongs and I'm gonna do what I call the raw chicken demo. And I'm gonna put, you know, I don't know about you, this has been sitting out, I put it on ice. So there's an ice block here just to keep it cold. But you know, when you're cooking in the, in the, in the kitchen and you take out, you know, the chicken and you get it all over your cutting board and all over your utensils, it's, I'm gonna spread it out all over here. And you think, oh my goodness, I don't wanna to touch anything because I know that if I touch that and then touch something else that I'm gonna get raw chicken, on my hands or on the doorknob. And if somebody puts that in their mouth, they could get sick. So what I've done was I've smeared this, my cutting board with raw chicken. And this is called a Pro Clean. This is not by Norwex. This is actually, you get these like at a pharmaceutical company, but this measures um, protein. And so if I take the swab out like this, I can pretend I'm a scientist. I'm gonna swab. I'm just gonna swab the cutting board where I had the chicken. So I had raw chicken on this on the cutting board. I'm gonna swab this. I hope I get all the chicken juice here. Yeah, I'm swabbing it up. And what I'm gonna do is take this and put it back in here. And when I do that, there's a little top in the, there's a little thing on the top. I'm gonna to snap that and a liquid's gonna come in down into the bottom. And what this test shows that if there's any protein on the swab, it will turn purple. Okay, so right now it's green, but I have to, I'm gonna shake it a little bit. It takes a minute for it to turn. I'll watch it won't turn, but anyway, hopefully I swabbed enough chicken uh, juice off that cutting board. But you can see it's kind of turning purple now. I'm gonna give it a second, I'm gonna tap it here. And it should be getting purple. Maybe I didn't get enough. Hang on. Sorry. I'm gonna swab up some more chicken juice, apparently. I'm gonna do it again. Okay. The chicken's a little bit dry now. But anyway, I'm gonna put this in the glass and I'm just gonna let it sit for a moment just to show you that it's gonna it'll turn color. So that's the one that I put that uh, I swabbed the board with. With Norwex, they're known for their microfiber or we're known for the microfiber. And so microfiber cloths are the standard thing that I use. They come in a variety of different sizes. I'm gonna fold this microfiber cloth and I'm gonna fold it so you see the, the label here, okay? And I'm gonna take this and I'm literally going, this is exactly how I clean. I'm gonna wipe, I'm gonna wipe the, the cutting board with this cloth and get all of the, I don't know if I got enough chicken juice on there. It's not turning purple. It is kind of turning purple. You can swab the chicken directly. Oh, I, you know what, I will. Hang on, that's actually a good idea. But it's on here, you saw the chicken go on here. I like that idea. Okay, so I'm gonna swab the chicken. 
Oh, okay. But you saw me put the chicken on the chicken on the board, right? We okay. did. Yeah. You did. <laughs> I'm not crazy, right? No. I, this is this. Okay, I hope Heather approves. It's organic chicken from Trader Joe's. I always get the organic <laughs> chicken. Is that a, that's okay? And I always get the thighs because it has more fat and it's tastier than the breasts. I love it. Yeah. Okay, so now it's turning purple. Does it look purple? Can you see yes. that? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so it's purple. So I'm gonna stick it there. So I've taken the cloth, right? And I've wiped the board down. You saw that I put raw chicken on there and I use the label side right there. And then I'm gonna take another swab and do the same thing. And on here, same board, I'm gonna swab all over. I'm gonna kind of rotate it and swab it all over. And this is a textured board. It's not smooth. It's got like little bumps on there. And I'm gonna do the test again and put it in here. Oops. This has never failed me. I'll laugh if my test fails. And you'll see that it's green, which means that there's no protein on there. Can you see that? Can you see the difference or no? No, no, I can. Yeah, you definitely can see that. Yeah, so that's just, and just to show you that, that and, and you saw me swab, I'm gonna take the same side that I cleaned the, the counter, the um, cutting board with, with the label. So you saw the label and I'm still using the label side. I'm gonna wipe down again. And I remember I wiped up the chicken with this. I'm gonna take the green one that showed no protein and I'm gonna swab it again. Yeah. You see me swabbing it again to see if any of that transferred back onto the cutting board. What is that swab, Karen? It's a protein swab. They use them in labs to test for proteins. So you'll see it's still green. Yes. Yes. So what, so what happens is what, what happened with this cloth is in Norwex, and that's the difference between using something like a, a you know, a disinfectant wipe. This says kills 99.9% .9 of virus and bacteria. So Norwex products doesn't kill bacteria. It removes bacteria. Mm -hmm. And so you saw that now you'll see the swabs are still purple and green, even though I had the chicken on the cutting board and this could be a plate it could be my really pretty parisian tray but once it's it was on there i took it i did the label side so you can see i wiped it it did not it removed the chicken juice or the protein you know the set what could cause salmonella and pulled it into the into the microfiber the microfiber is weaved so tightly it's like a star pattern it pulls it in and so when I swap, when I went back to do the second swab, it did not pick up that. It, it just pulls it all in. It just pulls it all in. There's 1,800 miles of fiber in this cloth. That's like from Canada to Mexico. Yeah. And so the the beauty of it of Norwex products is you're not using something like this. If I were to use this product, I'm putting chemicals on my cutting board, right? Yeah. Um, and when you read the directions, it tells you that you take the wipe. Um, and you take it and you wipe the surface and then you have to wait four minutes. I didn't know that. Did you know that? I, and I read the directions. You take the cloth out, you wipe down, you wait four minutes and then you go over it with water. So you're killing bacteria as opposed to removing bacteria. And then the way these cloths are cleaned is I rinse it under warm water, wring it out really well. I take it by the little label and I hang it to dry and it's self it's self, I mean, it's self-cleaning, it sanitizes and removes the bacteria. It's got backlog in there. So it's self-purifying. So within 24 hours, it will dry and it'll be ready for use again. And so the beauty of using these microfiber cloths is that I am not, you know, using chemicals. And then just because this is dirty, if this was like a regular tea towel or a regular cloth, I would say, oh, it's got chicken juice on it. I have to throw it in the laundry. But this, I would just rinse out you know, under warm water, hang it to dry, and tomorrow, within 24 hours, it'll self-purify and be ready to use again. It's got natural silver in there, not harmful silver, but natural silver fiber in there that keeps it and purifies it. So um, with this cloth, I can clean my cutting board, and this happens to be wet. I didn't, I don't think I said that at the very beginning, but it is damp and I wrung it out really well. I can use it to, you know, dry and use it to dust. 
I love, and I, and if you're not in my clutter-free, organized and clean Facebook group where, where I give all sorts of tips and do some silly videos, um, I have a video where I'm actually washing my windows. The, my windows are so clean and my mirrors are clean because I use a microfiber, um, an Enviro cloth and clean it while it's damp. And then I follow it with a window cloth, which is also from Norwex and has a, the hanging hooks. And these cloths are meant to you fold it up. And I, and I have another demo I can do, but I don't have time tonight. But I wash my window and I, you know, kind of wax on, wax off, right? In the old uh, Karate Kid movie. Um, so these will clean windows. They will clean mirrors. They will clean, you can use this on your toilet, on the rim of your toilet. You can use it on the floor, on the hardwood floor. So you clean with the hardwood floor and then you buff with the um, window cloth. All of your stainless steel appliances, anything that's shiny, these are the life-saving cloths that keep our house super clean. Um, I took this with my with me when I traveled with my son um, and drove out to the University of Denver in the fall. I took a couple of these with me. So I got into the into the hotel room. I rinsed under warm water, wrung it out, and I wiped down every single surface. I don't need these because I have this. So that's that's one Norwex product. Go ahead, Monique. Did you have a question? No. We can't, I can't hear you. Um, What's that? <laughs> You're on mute. <laughs> how often do you have to, um, well, how often do you wash those? So I wash all of my Norwex. So that's the one thing about Norwex. It has to be washed separately than other with, you don't wash yeah. it with your clothes. Otherwise you're going to damage the microfiber. I literally wash my cloths every three weeks. So I have a few cloths. Yeah. I don't, you know, yeah, I have a number of cloths, but I do all of my cloths. I have my little dish cloth right here. This is my little dish scrubber with a little, and they all have their names on here. So it'll, it'll say this, this says dish cloth on here. Um, and this has got a scrubby side and it's got the microfiber side. And this is fantastic for rolling up and getting in on my stainless steel um, yeah, counter, uh, you know, range. So when I'm doing all of my Norwex, I do, I do it every three weeks, one load. I put everything together. I pre-soak it. And I think what I'm going to do for this group, I'll share some of the photos of what I had because I am a clutter. I don't like a lot of clutter. I like things neat, organized, and just only what I need, not a bunch of extra stuff. I will show you a before and after picture of my um, laundry room. And in that laundry room, I had all the shelves full of product and now I took all that product out and replaced it with Norwex. And I went from having three full shelves of product that was only upstairs to having one little section of one shelf. So I freed up my entire cabinet for other things. Um, but yeah, I wash them every three weeks. Uh, you can replace, or I replaced um, paper towels with counter cloths. Mm -hmm. Now, do we still have paper towels? Yes, we still have paper towels because my husband makes the most amazing bacon on the weekend and he, you know, uses that to soak in the organic smoke, smoke bacon, um, <laughs> not my counter claws, but these are fabulous because, you know, if the, if those, if the paper towels are on the counter, it's so easy just to reach and grab one to wipe something up. I don't need paper towels because I can grab an Enviro cloth. I can use specifically my counter cloth and these come in a set of three. There's also a little house that, um, like a little house where they come stacked with six in there. My favorite thing to do in the morning, I every morning I have my coffee on my little Parisian tray and I lay a counter cloth on there and I put my coffee cup on there and it doesn't slide. So I can put this on here and it, you know, I got my kombucha. That's the other thing. I take, grab a kombucha to go. I go in the car and I wrap my kombucha because I don't want my hands to get cold. You know, I can use it to blow my nose. Again, this also has <laughs> bath lock in there. I know. That is a lock in there. <laughs> And, 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 uh, and you, again, you, you, rinse under, you rinse it under warm water, <laughs> wring it out and hang it to dry. It is fabulous. So I, these are great. So I have the counter claws. What really sold me on Norwex and I never ever thought I would become a Norwex consultant. And that's not really what I do. I do it, I do this on this, like just as my, I, Maria said, she does a bunch of other little things. I do this because it's, it's one of those little other things that has made such a huge difference in our lives. Just I, you know, Monique, we walked, uh, I've thought about you with the, with the scent. 
I'll take my son. We'll walk by, you know, Target right by the, you know, cleaning aisle. And oh. both of us are like, you know, we can't stand it. So I became a Norwex rep because I, somebody gave me this netted dishcloth. Okay. And it sounds kind of silly to have this netted dishcloth. I wash this also in the laundry, but this thing, if I spill flour on the counter, I just throw it and, you know, throw it down. I scoop up the flour and I shake it up and put it in the compost bin. I'm not using this little sticky sponge. If I accidentally drop and break an egg on the floor, this little counter cloth or this uh, little netted cloth will go down and just pull up the egg and, you know, off the floor. When I'm peeling potatoes, I lay it at the bottom of the sink and I peel the potatoes and catch it in here. And then I pick it up like this and throw it in the compost bin. So Norwex, there's so many great products that Norwex has and that, that we offer um, that I've eliminated, you know, and I'll show you the pictures of what I've eliminated. And I'll also show you what my typical soak Sundays look like where I'm soaking them because when you wash them, you have to soak them. They absorb so much that you cannot just put these into the washing machine because it'll absorb all the water. So I do a soak and pull up some of the dirt. I'll show you what my soak Sunday looks like. Um, I'll post that in the group. Uh, either tonight or tomorrow. So, um, so you can see what I've done. And I'm giving away tonight an optic cloth, which this is mine. It is, the one I'm giving away is a different pattern, but the optic cloth is, um, this is on a little carabiner, but this cleans, uh, I love this because it removes all of the bacteria, you know, the, the grime and bacteria off my phone. So mm -hmm. my phone, my iPad, any screen, my display screen in my car. So I'm giving away this uh, optic uh, cloth. I have it in either, oh, which one I've got two, I've got dots and I've got hummingbirds. So somebody will, whoever wins tonight will get their choice. And I nice. think that's it. I don't want to go over, but I think you I went through the highlight and look at, I'm still, we're still. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's great, Karen. Gosh, I, you know, I, I really love Norwex. I have, I have the what do you call that little uh, towel thing that Velcros when I get out of the shower? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Are you talking about for the, where you put around your body? Yes. It's so yes. great. You don't have to, um, you know, you put a towel around you and it falls off and it doesn't yes. stay on. Yes. So it's one thing I don't have. <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah. That honestly, that is a great thing, but, but I'm excited because I'm actually going to, um, to get some of those cloths. I, because every time I use paper towel, I kid you not, Karen, I think about you. I'm like, you do? I do. I'm thinking, Aww. Karen, not use all this paper towel. <laughs> sure. I know. I know. Yeah. And, he, you know, and it's, and it's easy to adjust to. Like I said, my husband yeah. has them very high on the shelf and we only pull them yeah. out on Sunday when he makes, you know, when he makes, when he cooks bacon and that's it. Yeah. So definitely much better it's for the environment. So it's there's so much waste it just makes me crazy yeah there's so. a there's a lot of waste and these cloths last for years so um and then there's a then norwex has a recycling program so when you're done with your when you get either tired of of the pattern or the color you can recycle them with norwex oh, so nice. yes and with every norwex order you, you when you get your box you can actually um get a link to get a free ups shipping label and and this is one other thing that i love about norwex being a clutter coach you can put items into a box and you get a free label from Norwex. You put items into a box, household items that you no longer want, and they ship it off to, I forget what it's called, something we care, and it goes out to people in need. So if you've got those little bottles of shampoo and conditioner from hotels or perfume you don't want, instead of throwing them away, you can put this all in a box. Norwex gives you a label and you can slap it on that Norwex box, reuse the box and get the stuff out of the house. Easy donation. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that, that's, I love that too. It's just so many ways to repurpose, yeah. you know, things. So. so I'm happy, I'm happy to help with your chemical exit strategy or just decluttering your home and looking for other ways to find use of things um, in, a, in a more healthy uh, and earth-friendly way. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Monique. I oh, appreciate thank it. Thank you, Karen. So much valuable information. My goodness, I love all the information sharing. I think I think yeah. it's just so beneficial because we can all help one another and learn from each other. That's so, true. Kay's clapping. She's being clapping. She's clapping. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so I wanted to thank you, uh, Maria and Kay. And, and actually, um, Gina, um, she's had some malfunctions with her um, her internet. So I think I'm going I'm to keep her in the drawing because I think that's only yes. that's fair. 
And um, so I'll do, I have, I, well, each of you are going to win something because we have three names and we have three drawings. So, so the first winner will be um, Heather. What, Heather, can you tell us what you're um, giving away? Yeah, so I have a one week um, kind of spring eating um, meal plan that'll have some recipes in it um, to kind of support the spring cleaning idea, clean foods. Um, and then I've got a couple of my favorite um, nutrition products, including my the superfood shake that I love. And I'm giving away um, your choice, either $30 off um, the 21 day cleanse program or $50 off the um, clean start coaching program with me. Nice. Um, and then we would just decide, I think, based on maybe doing a discovery call, which, which way you wanted to go. Nice. Okay. So I have that person here. Let's see. Oh, Gina, Gina J. Oh, She's yeah. my gal in um, is it New Jersey. I think it's New Jersey. We used to sell jewelry together. So, oh, that was so sweet. I, yeah. Oh, I love Gina. She's a, and she loves everything clean. So she, I know she'll be excited about that. Perfect. So I'll Perfect. I'll post that in um, on our page too. Okay. So um, then Karen will do the next one for Karen. And oh, Maria, Maria, yay! And what is that? What is the cloth? I'm doing. It's a it's a optic cloth. Oh yes, oh yes. Which is great. which is which you can use to clean your eyeglasses and any electronics. And Maria, if you'd like to do if you'd like to do thirty minutes of clutter coaching, I can do that as well, FaceTime or by phone. If you've got a challenge area, I know that you've just moved and you probably decluttered. But if you want to do that, I'm happy to help you with that have, as well. I have the perfect closet for that. Oh, good. I do oh, remote sick. coaching. Yeah, so we can connect for that. What we've got a, a choice of dots or hummingbirds. Hummingbirds. Oh, okay. yeah. I can see that, Maria. Yeah. So I'll send that to you as well. Thank you. Great. And then, so Kay, you are the winner of my gift, and my gift is um, a lip conditioner in peppermint. Do you are you have any allergies to peppermint? No, you're on mute. <laughs> Favors last words. <laughs> yeah, any, I, I'm not allergic to peppermint. Sorry. You're not. Oh, good. Because I love this. I'm I have it on my, my bed table. Oh, do you have this already? I do not. I haven't even tried oh. it. Oh, perfect. Oh, perfect. My gosh. It's so nice. I have it by my bed table and I get every night I use it and my lips are, uh, it's so windy too. We have all this wind usually so chapped, but so this is a great product. So I'll get awesome. that to you. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so, so thank now, you. Um, oh, go ahead. Now I'm putting you on mute because my little friend here is being very needy here. Okay. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, I just want to thank you all for for hopping on and and thank you Heather and Karen for participating. I just think it's great, like I said, to share knowledge and tips and um, just you know support one another. I just think that's a beautiful thing all around. So. Thank you for hosting, Lenny. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Great. Great. It was nice meeting you. So I'll, I'll um, circle back and take a look at your websites and see if there are any other products I can. Yeah, Maria, may I, may I um, reach out to you on Facebook and uh, get your yeah, address so I can mail this? Okay, thank you. Great. Bye, All right. Bye Monique. Have a good evening. Bye. Bye. I'll, I'll post the recording on the event page too. Oh, perfect. Thanks okay. so much. Okay. Thank right. you. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.